Good morning, friends and family. So good to have you with us today. I see the checks with us and Tony, Felice, Kristen, Terry, Gary, Chuck, mentioned you already. <laughs> good morning, guys. So good to have you with us. And I'm about ready. So uh, we're in the book of Mark this morning. So join us if you would. Open your Bibles to the book of Mark. And wanted to give a heads up to, uh, no, I'm not leaving the town or anything. But I think uh, Monday we're scheduled to have communion. So uh, so I let you know a few days ahead of time so that you can have the uh, your grape juice ready and your bread so that we can enjoy communion together. If that's correct, Tuesday's the second, so Monday must be the first. And uh, well, have have been busy. Um, in addition to uh, my teaching uh, through the sixty-six books each weekday morning, I'm teaching uh, the Book of Genesis on Tuesday and Thursday night. So we did that last night. It was a wonderful thing. And uh, we have uh, still a uh, wonderful family with us, um, Matt and Elizabeth Finch, and they're a tremendous blessing to us. And um, uh, they're helping us out in so many ways. Uh, today, if you pray for me, I'm Pilar and I are going to minister to a family who lost their uh, mother uh, last year. So this is the year anniversary. So they invited us to come and to be a part of uh, the memorial time, uh, kind of traditional here in Peru. You do this, uh, you know, a year after. And so uh, pray for us uh, as we travel out there this morning after our devotional time with you. So why don't we go ahead and pray and we'll ask the Lord for his anointing on his word today. Father, we are grateful to be able to meet like this around your word to be ministered to through your word. We pray that you would minister your word to our hearts, that you would uh, cleanse us, Lord, cleanse our minds, prepare us to receive from you the, today, we ask in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that you would bless each and every person who is watching. And uh, where there's need, bring healing, bring your provision. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Very good. So the book of Mark, and uh, of course, his name is John Mark, a close associate of the apostles Peter and Paul. Uh, it's the shortest of the four Gospels. Mark provides a fast-paced and action-passed account of the life teachings and miracles of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. It focuses on Jesus' ministry as a servant, a miracle worker, and a suffering Messiah. Mark's Gospel was written in Greek, probably from Peter's perspective, likely for a Roman audience, <clears throat> and its purpose was to present Jesus as the powerful and mighty Son of God who brings salvation to all who believe in him. Mark uses the word immediately 39 times, showing the fast-paced, forward movement of this servant of God. And so, uh, very interesting um, <clears throat> that uh, the word immediately is seen so many times. Um, I want to show you some highlights from the four Gospels, Messianic highlights from the four Gospels. Yesterday we saw in the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew speaks to the Jews, he writes to the Jews and reveals that Jesus is the promised Messiah, giving them his genealogy, going all the way back to Abraham, often referring to many of the prophecies in the Tanakh. As we saw yesterday, it said, uh, Matthew said, as it was spoken of by the prophet, and uh, many times he uh, uses that phrase and takes us back to the Old Testament, takes us to those prophecies concerning the Messiah. Well, here in the book of Mark, it's a little bit different. The highlights are different. Mark reveals Jesus as the suffering servant to reach the Romans, the Gentiles. A slave has no genealogy. It's interesting, there's no genealogy in the book of Mark. And it talks about what Jesus did. It's fast-paced. It's a short gospel revealing the Messiah, that the Messiah came to suffer and to die to redeem people. And this is the greatest act of this servant 
uh, he died on our behalf. He, um, he suffered as a slave uh, in order to redeem people. And so we will always be grateful for this. Tomorrow we'll be taking a look at Luke and his highlights, and of course the following day, the book of John. So, number one, discovering Messiah in the book of Mark. Peter is convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. Just look at Peter's words here when Jesus asked him a question. Mark chapter 8, verse 27. Now Jesus and his disciples went out of the towns of Caesarea Philippi, and on the road, he asked his disciples, saying to them, Who do men say that I am? So they answered, John the Baptist. But some say, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. Then he strictly warned them that they should tell no one about him. Now, Jesus didn't deny and say, no, you guys are wrong. Uh, Peter, <laughs> I'm not the, the Christ. I'm not the Messiah. He did not say that. He just said, let's not tell anyone at this point. And so I think it's interesting when Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am. Some people thought that Jesus was John the Baptist who had returned from the dead. And uh, they were spooked out by this because many of the things that Jesus did were the same things that Jesus, that John was doing. Uh, others say Elijah. Remember we just study, studied the book of Malachi and Malachi said that uh, Elijah would be returning and um, of course, he's one of the two that had never passed away, experienced death. And others say that Jesus is one of the prophets. Now, remember way back in our study of Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, we talked about one of the prophecies concerning the Messiah, uh, that uh, he would be a prophet, a prophet just like Moses. And, um, and so they're thinking that Jesus might be Jeremiah, he might be Elijah, he might be the prophet. Uh, but Peter answered correctly. He said, no, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And so we have this bold uh, word from Peter, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ. And so this is, uh, this is wonderful in our study, glimpses of the Messiah. Okay. The next thing that we see is, I see my internet is very slow. Sorry about that, guys. So uh, the next thing that we see is the Messiah came as a slave to serve. He did not come to be served. Let's read about that in Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. We'll be there in a second. Verses 42 through 45. But Jesus called his disciples to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. <clears throat> Yet it shall not be among you. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And so the disciples were thinking, you know, um, we want uh, position, we want power in your kingdom. And uh, Jesus was saying, you know, my kingdom is different. Those who rule in my kingdom aren't like the Gentiles who lorded over the people. In my kingdom, he who wants to be great will be a, become a servant and if you want to be first, you need to become a slave first of all. You know, the Apostle Paul understood this and he uh, mentioned what it is to be a bond servant, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. And it's a slave by choice. He voluntarily, give, voluntarily gives his life to be a servant, <clears throat> a menial household servant. And uh, the servant, um, has no rights. He's relinquished all of his rights. And so he has no right to marry. He has no right to, um, to have a career. Um, he is totally yielded to the will of his master. 
And that's what it is to be a follower of Jesus. It's when we relinquish all of our rights and we say, Jesus, you are the only one who I am concerned with. Not myself, not my future, not my bank accounts or anything else. I want to follow you. So, um, Jesus is saying that uh, he came not to be served, but he came to serve. He is a slave who came to serve. And what will he do? He will give his life as a ransom for many. And so we're going to be taking a look at him now, dying on the cross for our sins. Look at what we see here. In uh, <clears throat> the next uh, section, boy, the internet is slow. Uh, here we go. Jesus served us by taking our place, dying on the cross for our sins. And so that's what uh, this slave does. Jesus takes our place. Let's read about it in Mark chapter 15, starting in verse 22. It says, and they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated the place of the skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour and they crucified him and the inscription of his accusation was written above the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. And the story continues here. And should mention they divided his garments and so he was just uh, at this point a, a, a slave. Verse 29, so the scripture was fulfilled which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And let's remember that, that he was numbered with the transgressors. Where does that come from? Isaiah chapter 53. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, saying, Aha! You who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself and come down from that cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking him themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe even those who were crucified with him reviled him and so he was going through mocking they were blaspheming him they were saying if you are really the christ if you're really the messiah then come down from that cross and what a temptation it would have been for jesus to come off the cross because um um, you know, the human part of Jesus, and we'll see that tomorrow as we examine Luke's gospel. He did not want to die. He did not want to suffer. He did not want to be crucified. And so it was a temptation when the people were saying, hey, come down off that cross. He could have done that. Being God, he's all powerful. But, you know, he couldn't do it because he came as a servant. He knew that the only way to save the world would be by serving the world by dying on the cross for the sins of the entire world. And so he couldn't do it, even though physically he could do it. He knew that there was no other way because he had already asked his father, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And so Jesus came to serve you. He came to serve us because he loves us and he knew there's no other way that he could save mankind from their sins, from the consequences of their sins. Now it's interesting, it says here that he was numbered among the transgressors. Where is that found in the Old Testament? Yes, we studied it before in Isaiah chapter 53. So let's go to Isaiah 53 and let's review what we saw earlier and see Jesus now on the cross. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. 
In this prophecy concerning Jesus, it says he bore our griefs, he carried our sins, he was stricken, afflicted, wounded, bruised, chastised, he uh, suffered stripes, and the Lord laid on him all of our sins, all of our iniquities. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He did not open his mouth as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before its shears of silence. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison. He was imprisoned there in Caiaphas's house and from judgment before Pilate and Herod. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. What does it mean that he was cut off from the land of the living? He died, he was crucified, he paid the punishment that we deserved. And says for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And then finally in verse 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put on him he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see the labor of his soul. What does a servant do? He labors and be satisfied. <clears throat> and here it is. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered. Here it is. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many and made intercession for transgressors. And so Isaiah 53 is talking about the righteous servant, the Messiah, who would be a suffering servant and would come and die for the sins of all mankind. That's what Mark is about, uh, talking about Jesus as a suffering servant, a fast-paced book. He's immediately going from here to there. It seemed like his direction was um, rapidly going to the cross because he knew what his assignment would be. He knew what he had to do as a servant that was to die for the sins of all mankind. And so that's what we see here in the book of Mark. And the verse of the day has to do with us and dying as well. In Mark chapter 8, verses 34 and 35, when Jesus called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. And so Jesus is saying, if you want to follow me, if you want to be a servant, you need to take up your cross. You need to be willing to die. And um, we follow our master's example. We follow the suffering servant's example. He laid down his life for the sheep and uh, we need to bear our cross as well. So the disciples were thinking, we're going to be great. We're going to have position. We're going to have authority. We're going to be in this great kingdom that God is going to establish. But they didn't realize that um, in God's kingdom, no one is being served. We are all serving each other to the extent of laying down our lives for each other. This is the example that Jesus gave us, this is what he wants me or us to do as well. Well, let me say hello to everyone. James Deaver is with us. He says, hi, John, I hope you are well. All good in Scotland. I will try and catch your teachings, but I am on the way to school, run almost 3 p.m. here. James, it's so good to, uh, to hear from you and God bless you. Felice um, from Tennessee, she says, Shalom, great blessing to hear the word. Terry says, good morning, Pastor John and the Bonner Bunch. Uh, Kristen says, happy day, family. Chuck Anders says, so blessed to be here with you all. Jesus is our rock. We are the, on the same team. Hope you're home now, Chuck, or at least on your way soon. Gary said, let's worship. Love you all. And uh, Kristen says, team Jesus. Tony says, good morning all. Have a blessed day. Kristen says, 
Welcome here, James from Scotland. Oh, far, far away, so good to have you. And uh, Pat Stokes says, good morning. And good morning from uh, Wyoming. And Randy Reams is back with us. He says, good morning, everyone. So good to have you, Randy. And now, um, I know there's others who listen. Uh, they can't tune in at uh, this time every morning. Uh, but there's one person that I'm thinking about who joins us every day. He writes and lets me know how the Lord is ministering to him. And his name is Aaron Vasquez. And so, Aaron, we're happy to have you with us as well. And we need to uh, add him, Kristen, to our, <clears throat> to our um, group on Facebook. I'm not sure if Aaron is on Facebook or not, but... Uh, it's good to have him with us as well. So from Scotland, from Tennessee, from Colorado, and from Arizona, California, and uh, other places. So good to have you all with us today. May God bless you. And Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning when we continue with uh, 66 books in 66 days. We'll be taking a look at uh, which book? We'll be taking a look at uh, the book of Luke uh, that you God bless you. Bye-bye.